Hey everybody, this is Ted Petru with a lesson on finding the percentage of missing values in each column of a pandas data frame. I'm the author of Pandas Cookbook, which has recipes for exploring real world data sets. I'm also the founder of Dunder Data, a company that specializes in training data scientists. So in this particular lesson, we're going to import a data set into a pandas data frame and then we're going to find the percentage of values that are missing in each column. Now there are a number of ways to do this but there's one straightforward way that I believe is the best and the way that I use and I want to show you that method. So let's get started. I'm going to import pandas into my namespace. And then I'm going to read in a data set that has information on many flights that took place in the US during the year 2015. It's uh, in this CSV file, flights.csv. So here's the data set right here. Um, let me go ahead and assign this to a variable, let's just say flights. And let's uh, just output the head. Uh, one very common piece of information that I almost always get is uh, the shape of this data frame. So we have 58,000 rows and 31 columns. You'll notice that actually you can't even see uh, all the column names are not visible. Pandas defaults the number of columns in that are visible to 20. So I'm going to go ahead and change this. And this is one of the display options. Excuse me. It's options dot display dot max columns you can see it's 20 I'm going to just assign this uh, variable to 100 and now when I do flights dot head you'll see that I can now see every single column without any of them being covered up so right after scheduled time uh, is elapsed time but that was not visible before okay so I'm going to go through some ways uh, that might help us get to a solution but don't uh, provide us a, a, an idiomatic solution. So let's go look at this info method. Many of you I'm sure are aware of this info method. So this gets us uh, information that's very close to what we want. So it prints to the screen every single column and it actually prints the as you can see here, the number of non-missing values. So we're looking for the percentage of missing values, not exactly what we want. It also outputs the data type and a little bit of more metadata on, on the entire table. So uh, that is one method. Um, and you can see that all the columns that have exactly 58,492 here don't have any missing values. The ones that have some other number do have missing values, but we don't have the percentage. Um, okay, so if we call, there's a count method, and if we pull up the doc strings here by pressing, sh holding down shift and pressing tab twice, you can see this count method is actually counting the number of non-missing value values for each column or row. By default, it does each column. So when I execute this, flights.count, it will return a panda series with each column name in the index. And the value is simply the number of non-missing values as the uh, number that's the documentation told us. So this is going to match exactly what we see in the info method up here. So again, uh, this is close to what we want, but isn't uh, quite there. The advantage of the count method is that we actually have a return series object uh, as opposed to the info method, which actually does not return any object and simply just prints all this information to the screen. So that is quite a big difference. Um, there is no actual object here that is returned, uh, but with count, you actually have a pandas series, so you can do further analysis on that. Okay. Um, now, um, before we get to the sum method that I have outlined below, the one of the uh, ways to determine whether whether any value is missing or not is with the isNA method. 
Now the isNA method will, ret will return the entire data frame, the same shape of the data frame, but simply replace every single value with true or false. So any value that was not missing will be false, and any value that was missing will be true. So if we look, if we scan through here, we can see that I actually don't see any missing values um, in the first several columns, but if we scroll to the right further down the line, we'll eventually see there's uh, some columns on uh, the, f the right side of the data frame that indeed have some missing values, and it looks like this cancellation reason, for example, has, has lots and lots of missing values. So the goal here is to find the, uh, the number of missing values, or the percentage of missing values. Um, so let's go ahead and just title this flights missing, and then we'll just print out the output the head here so we can keep a record of what's going on. So if we begin with flights missing, one of the key things to observe or to understand about this particular data frame, flights missing, is that every single value is a Boolean. So every single column has a data type that is Boolean. And so maybe that would be a good idea to just double check here. It's if you run this dtypes uh, command, which it will output the data type of every single column and as you can see, we're guaranteed here to have Boolean columns, which means uh, every column is guaranteed to have exactly, at most, two values, either true or false values. So that's important uh, to just be aware of. Now, uh, Booleans in Python evaluate to 0 and 1. So false evaluates to 0, and true evaluates to 1. So what we can do to find the percentage of missing values since trues represent missing values for flights missing, if we use the sum method here, this will sum up all the true values, or simply just count the number of trues, or another way of saying this is to count the number of missing values. So we're getting fairly close to our answer now. So now we have a series with the column names in the index, and the values are the number of missing values. So we're close to uh, what we want. We just simply need to divide every single value in this particular series by the total number, and we will get our answer. So let's go ahead and assign this to, say, flights um, num missing. So a little bit long on the name there, but it's descriptive. So all I did was assign this to a variable. Now, to divide by the total number of values to get our result, um, we can simply use the length function to get the total number of missing values. So if I do the length of flights, it's uh, 58,492, and that agrees with the shape. So what I'll want to do is simply take the flights, uh, num missing, and divide it by the length of the flight. So I'm going to divide, ev what this will do is it will divide every single value you see here by 58,492. So when we execute this, we now get exactly what we want. So the year has 0% missing values. The tail number has, looks like, 0.25% missing values. There are several other columns with missing values. If we Go down to the end, we see the cancellation reason actually has 98.5% missing values. And that's, uh, I, I'm assuming that's because it's uh, not often that a flight is canceled. So the only time that you get a reason is when there's a canceled flight. Okay, so if you notice what we just did here, flights num missing <clears throat> is simply the sum of, you know, we just took the sum of every column and we divided it by the length. So there's a very simple mathematical name for this. Whenever you take the sum of a column and you divide it by the length of that column, and that's just simply the mean. So this is not uh, as an intuitive as a um, as intuitive as just doing it, uh, taking the sum and dividing by the by by the length. 
But in fact, if you just uh, call the mean directly upon this flight's missing data set, so if we take this data set again, and we just look at the um, output, not num missing, excuse me, flight's missing. If we directly call from here the mean function, this will do the sum and divide by the number, the length of the column all in one step. So we don't have to sum and then divide by the length. That's exactly the definition of the mean. So if we do this, you'll see that this result is exactly equivalent to the one above. Now, we can do this in one single step. So flights missing was just simply flights dot is in a so we did this that's what flights missing was it turns everything into a missing value and then we can simply chain the mean method like this so we can do this in one single step and it's not complex uh, once you understand what we went through now I like to you know I typically like to round things off in pandas so by default, pandas will, will, will display six decimals. So typically, you know, the end decimals are not going to be very valuable for as a visual to look at. It's essentially noise. Um, so I like to round things off. So if you would like, you can round, you know, round this off to maybe four decimal places and chop off the last two. It gets you a much neater uh, looking series. You can even go to two decimals, but the reason I went to four is that if you want, like, for instance, an actual percentage, then you can just multiply by a hundred, and you get to, uh, you know, uh, you get you have a two decimals over here. So you can report that okay, departure delay has one point four two percent of its values missing. Wheels on has one point five five percent of its values missing, and so forth. So this is what I would say is called an idiomatic solution. It is one that is efficient and straightforward and uh, not terribly complex. The key uh, part to understand this is when you take the mean is simply uh, you know, taking, counting the number of missing values and then dividing by the length. And that's uh, not intuitive for everyone the first time they see that, but once you work it out with the steps abo above, I believe it does eventually become um, easy to wrap your mind around. Okay, so that's essentially the solution. I want to cover a couple other topics just to show you some different ways of doing this. I suggest doing it this way, but sometimes you there, you could have used count uh, like this, but to find the number of missing values, you would have to subtract uh, from the total number um, this count. So there you would have... Um, uh, the, the number of missing values and in fact it's probably easier to just simply uh, divide by the length so you get a percentage of non-missing values and then you can subtract uh, do one minus this and then this would get you the same exact answer as, as above so this is a perfectly valid solution I just happen to per prefer the other one um, since it's just one method after another being chained um, but this is certainly uh, usable as well. So the, the very last point I want to make is that um, you need to understand that this is a general, this, you should be able to generalize this result to any um, Boolean series or really any Boolean data frame. So for instance, if we look at flights uh, one more time, and let's take a look at uh, like this departure delay column. So. If we create a Boolean series out of here, say we want to find all the flights that had a departure delay of greater than 60 minutes. And I'll just uh, say GT60, just so we can uh, save this to a variable. Well, we can use the same reasoning to find, we can use dot sum to find the number of occurrences that the departure delay was greater than 60 minutes but we can also find the percentage of flights that were delayed longer than 60 minutes.
So in this case, we have 6.2% of flights that were delayed greater than 60 minutes. So I'm using the same reasoning here. Once you have a Boolean series, you can sum it up to find the number of true values, or you can uh, call the mean method on it to find the percentage of true values. So we've uh, just genera generalized the result from the percentage of missing values to just the, any percentage of Boolean uh, values. Okay, so that wraps up this lesson, and essentially the the goal is, or, or the, the, the solution is to simply call a data frame, or find get your data frame, call the is and a method to turn every single value to a missing value, then call mean on that, and that's essentially uh, it, and that will find the percentage of missing values that are missing, and then you can clean it up a little bit, and if you want a percentage, you can multiply it by 100. Okay, uh, that's it for this one. There'll be plenty more of these to come.